What up artists? My name is Dwayne Jones. I'm the creative director and founder of a lifestyle brand called Art Pays Me. This is the Art Pays Me podcast and I'm passionate about finding ways that people like you and me can make a living for ourselves off of our creativity and you know maybe we can make the world a better place at the same time. Let's get into it. All right, so welcome to Art Pays Me. Today we have Josh Rogers, and I came across Josh um, somewhere between Instagram and Twitter. And then, of course, I've collaborated with Allison, his partner, and she always tells me wonderful things about this Josh person. <laughs> and uh, I checked out the work, and it's like crazy good. And uh, it's an honor to have Josh on the show. So, Josh, thank you for coming on. And um, if you could tell the people what is it that you do, that'd be great. Sure, sure. Well, thanks for having me on. Uh, I'm a by day. My day job is I'm a I'm a professional animator for uh, a bunch of kids' cartoons, and then at night I draw a bunch of adult cartoons. So <laughs> I don't have much of a life, unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately, depending on. <laughs> If you enjoy the work or not. Right. So what uh, what kids cartoons do you work for, if you don't mind? Or is that something you don't really want to talk about? Well, I, I can uh, I can talk a little bit about the ones I've worked on in the past. But really, they're nothing. They're nothing unless you have like a really young kids. You know, you might not have heard of them. OK. Like, like I worked on uh, Addison for CBC, which I thought was a really cute cartoon. OK. But, but a lot of people don't really know about it unfortunately hmm. um i worked on uh um woody woodpecker okay on for youtube um what else did i work on I worked on a bunch of stuff that's just bizarre derpy bacon and megs was the thing i storyboarded on cool <laughs> uh, that's on youtube uh, a lot of youtube projects recently the the industry is really changing you're we're starting to see a lot more contracts come up from uh from all the uh big youtube people that's very interesting so like a lot more people who uh they're independent but they found a way to earn some money and put out contracts sort of thing oh yeah like they're they're bajillionaires <laughs> yeah crazy they made their money playing like uh minecraft or low roblox low blocks i don't know what it's called because i'm old <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> but, i don't know anything about that stuff <laughs> But yeah, they, they just played online and they have like an audience of like 8 million people that they can easily get content out to. And and that's sort of a sweet spot where a lot of these guys want to be. So now they want cartoons and all that done because they need content, which is great. You, you need constant content to stay on top. Wow. So it's a never ending, <laughs> it's, it's a never ending cycle of work. <laughs> right, right. And you're based in Halifax, correct? Yeah, yeah. I've been living here for about 20 years. Oh, same as me, actually. Yeah. Oh, great. Where are you? Where are you from? <laughs> New Brunswick. I didn't move that far. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was just uh, counting the years the other day. I've been telling everyone it's nineteen years, but it's actually twenty years that I lived here. It's like, wow. Geez. Oh, wow. We're it's it's weird getting old. <laughs> it's very strange. I know. I'm like I still identify as someone from Bermuda but I moved here at 19 so I've officially lived in Halifax longer than I lived in Bermuda which is <laughs> wild to me you're starting to find donair sauce all over the place and you're you're just like oh no yeah oh no I'm becoming more and more Nova Scotian by the <laughs> second seriously uh <laughs> man uh so um I know I was looking at like Captain Mo Captain Mushface. So what's Captain Mushface yes. about? Is that your like your alias or is that like a project you worked on? Well, it was uh uh I wanted to I always wanted to be a comic book artist when yeah. I was younger. And that dream that it kind of died off. And I was more into like I'm more into the animation side of things now. But years and years ago, uh I was still learning how to draw and stuff. I was working in animation, which goes to show you don't really know how to you don't have to know how to draw that well to be an animator. But uh but I was I wanted to like really push my skills forward and do this comic book thing. 
and uh, I, I just realized nobody was going to be uh, offering me the job. Mm -hmm. I needed to learn how to do it myself and to learn how to do it yourself. The only good way to do it is just to, well, do it. Right. So I, I made a, I made up a really dumb character named Captain Mushface. Um, um, I was told by a few <laughs> industry professionals it was terrible <laughs> that, I should, that I should stop. <laughs> and that just made me want to do it more. <laughs> right. And, uh, and then I just kind of like, uh, you know, when I started making, uh, making up different little stories and all that for this weird character, I, I started to move away from doing comic books. And I just started to focus on illustration. Mm -hmm. And then slowly I started to go like, well, I'm a professional animator. I should be, you know, making cartoons. Mm -hmm. so I was just I, was, I just sort of looked at it realistically I was like well I I have all the equipment uh, I have the know-how let's try it what's the worst that could happen it's good worst that could happen is it sucks mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like yeah who cares right so yeah I just started making little cartoons instead and man it's a uh, it's a lot of work <laughs> yeah yeah, I messed with animation a little bit when I was in school and I loved it, but I just, the the time commitment, and I, I just was like, whoa, this is a, you got to dedicate your life to this. It's not something <laughs> you can just do, right? <laughs> yeah. It takes me like a year to make a six minute cartoon. <laughs> so yeah. <it's> <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Um, so like, do you write, you said you, you write and you illustrate and you animate? these projects yeah the only thing i don't do myself is a lot of the uh voice acting i try to get other people to do that because i just don't like it mm. I, I hate being behind a microphone uh, like i'm not good at it i can't my voice can't really do certain things a lot of other people could easily do right so i'm, I'm constantly looking for people to help me out with the uh with the voice acting mm. but so uh other than that, like it's, I could do pretty much everything else on my own and I could be as bad as I want. It's great. Well, you're, you're extremely talented. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta say like your work is incredible and I admire that. It seems like you draw a lot. You put a lot of time into the craft. Is that correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I truly love it. I, uh, I'll sit there and study just how like, how different artists that I grew up liking will crosshatch like mm. clothes and stuff. Like I'm one of those weirdos where I'm just mm. like, Oh look, this guy, he's only doing straight lines up and down, but this guy over here, he, uh, he crisscrosses his lines and mm. follows the contour of the body. And people are just like, what are you talking about? Go outside. <laughs> <laughs> Get some fresh air. <laughs> right. I mean, Hey, this, but that's, just, this is the thing. Like this is, so I, I struggle with this with my daughter a bit because she's into illustration and animation. And in order, we, we're always trying to push both of my girls to go outside and do things and, and like socialize. But I deep down know that in order for her to be as good as she wants to be at this animation and illustration stuff, it's like, she kind of needs to sit inside and and just work because that's that's what I did. It's what we all end up having to do, like putting that time in. Oh, get her a get her a junker sketchbook, something that she could just take outside and uh, draw trees and stuff like that. Not have to worry about really banging it up. Oh, I have a bunch of no, those. She has no problem taking her stuff anywhere. She doesn't. Oh, care. great. Yeah, she's not, <laughs> she's not too to precious. Hear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I was checking out the uh, episode of um, Ah Henry Henry Henry. <laughs> Henry versus the reptilian overlords from the cosmos. If you're a, if you're an independent, you have to pick a name that nobody else will ever pick in their lifetime. Yeah, <laughs> so make it long and horrible. <laughs> so, like, what is the deal with Henry? Who who is Henry? And what like what's his what's his deal? So. Uh, um, the world as we know it has ended. Um, mm -hmm. Global warming and coronavirus and whatever other thing you want to throw in there uh, caused us to nuke each other into the ground. Mm -hmm. So it's a post-apocalyptic future. And Henry is sort of this uh, ex-wrestler slash conspiracy theorist who just happens to be right that 
the government was run by a bunch of lizard people. <laughs> now he's on he's on this weird quest uh, when he's lucid to uh, to to uh, avenge humanity to to take revenge for humanity's sake. But really, he just he's he's kind of lost it. He's just sort of wandering through with a little sidekick named Bunyan, who's a um, half rabbit, half onion um, wizard. So it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of like a Mad Max meets He-Man meets some old Looney Tune cartoons I like and stuff like that. Right. I, f- I feel like Henry is like a real life Twitter character somewhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He probably he probably has a few he has a few inspirations in him. He's a he's like a if you, if he had to like bring him all, boil him down to his little ingredients, he's a little bit of Jesse Ventura and a little bit of <laughs> yes, like a little bit of David Duke. Not the not the racist sides of David Duke, but the <laughs> but the funnier sides and a little bit of you know. I, I have a, like a little ideas of where he all came from, and of course, mm. like you have to throw in like the the Roddy Piper style insults. Right, right. Yeah, it was it's actually pretty funny and uh again, I just love the work. So so congrats on that. Well, thank and, you. And um are you a, were you a fan of Ren and Stimpy growing up? Oh god, yeah. That's <laughs> that's probably <laughs> that show probably ruined my life and made me want to be an animator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just like, wow, there's a cartoon where, you know, a cat has a has a booger collection under a table and you know, they all talk to him. Like mm-hmm. I'm in, I'm, all, I'm whatever this is. I, I have to, I have to follow in the footsteps of this. And then years later, you come to find out the truth about the, uh, <laughs> about the man who created Ren and Stimpy and Oh boy. <laughs> oh, what happened? I didn't know. I don't know. I was a big fan of Ren and Stimpy growing up. What's oh, the- well, uh, he got sort of me too, I guess he, oh, uh, did he? Oh yeah, yeah. He was right into underage girls, and uh, he did some very bad things. And unfortunately, oh. uh, uh, but there was a lot of other people that were very, very good that worked on Ren and Stimpy well after he was fired. And there's a documentary coming up about it that I really want to check out called, uh, I think it's called Happy Happy Joy Joy, the Ren and Stimpy documentary or something like that. Okay, but it looks really good. Cool, cool. Yeah, like when I see some of the stuff, like you, you, you go right into the grossness. Like you don't run away from it, you don't shy away from it. And I was like, man, this feels Ren and Stimpy-ish in some ways. Like, oh yeah, that has Ren and Stimpy DNA all over it. Just <laughs> <laughs> I can't hide it. I can't hide my influences. Yeah, yeah. And what's uh, what's Slaughter Lake? Oh, that was a that was like a little comic book, a little one-off comic book I made years and years ago and uh it made the rounds it did pretty good for being like a like a nobody comic but i was just making fun of like 80s uh slasher films namely like the friday the 13th series gotcha and uh yeah it was just just this fun little one-off comic you can read it for free on my all my junk for free on my website captainmushface.com okay cool and like do you have any like bigger plans for some of these projects that you're putting on? Uh, sort of. I'm trying to pitch Henry around to see if like, uh, I'd love it if I could get it on like Adult Swim or something like that. Mm. Cause then uh, that would give me resources to uh, things I desperately need. <laughs> Voice actors and writers. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like what do you, what do you, um, uh, animating it all in so i use uh adobe animate which used to be called adobe flash oh okay yeah yeah and it's uh i it, well it's it's a mixture of of classical animation and the symbol animation mm-hmm. so some stuff will move a lot and then just to save time i'll have to like slow down the movements and to an almost stop and do a bunch of still frames and stuff like that just right. to stay on Somewhat of a schedule. Yeah. And I see sometimes you do, which which is a cool idea to like, you have your more detailed drawings and then do a still with that and then have some moving pieces around it just to like, I don't know, it creates an additional conversation piece, I think, in, in in the work. 
Oh yeah, thanks. And and that's something else I got from Ren and Stimpy. Kind of like they used mm. to do those uh, gross out paintings. They do it on SpongeBob still, like where something's gross and then everything just kind of stops. And there's this like beautiful painting of like a zit or something. I was just like, dude, I have to, <laughs> I have to steal all this. <laughs> this is, yeah, it's too fun. That's what cartoon making should be fun. Yes, yes. So like, yeah, you mentioned you just don't, you don't have a life. You you stay in the house and you just work. And <laughs> this is like your hobby and your livelihood. I'm, I take it. <laughs> it's just a just a weird obsession. <laughs> just yeah. a, I'm going to look horrible when I'm old. <laughs> I'm going to be all <laughs> curled over and bald with long hair on the sides. I'm going to look like my drawings. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Henry all day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just won't have the muscle tone. I'll just be this weird. <laughs> so um, and another thing you do that's, I'm guessing it's some kind of a collaborative project. What is draw pile? So how does draw pile work? Oh, that's uh, that's all magic. I have no idea. I try. I can't even get that working on my end. <laughs> but huh. a friend of mine can. Uh, what it is is just like a like a big uh, drawing program where you can all draw in real time together with friends. Oh, so uh, well. Well, we were all on lockdown from this coronavirus thing. Uh, a friend of mine asked if I'd like to do this thing. Like once a week, we just go in and do a big, uh, almost like a, just a collage of cartoons in this thing. And we've been doing that and people seem to love it. They want prints of it and all that. And we've been sort of tossing around the idea of uh, doing a charity stream. Mm. But we're still in the early stages of planning that. And because uh, we we have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they do come out like pretty cool looking when I mean, you see all those different styles sort of just and it looks intentional the way their their composition works. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, they they surprisingly come out pretty OK for the <laughs> for what we do. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of COVID, like how did um, COVID impact your business? Uh, well, I was working from home anyway for the past uh, few years, uh, so it wasn't there wasn't anything sort of different there. Uh, they they mostly said to the people still working in studio, "Hey, go home, go work at home. Hmm. You know, we'll we'll figure it out," kind of thing. Uh, so that aspect of it hasn't changed too much, but we've been getting more contracts lately. And that's just because the live action stuff kind of dried up. You can't go film live action stuff right now, but you can't cartoons. You can make those anywhere. Right. So, uh, right. so right now it's, it's like a, a really busy time in animation. So if, if you're trying to get into the animation industry, this is the time to apply everywhere. <laughs> like it's just because hmm. we can't find enough people for some of these uh, to fill some of these roles. Wow. Yeah, I guess that's pretty, yeah, because I mean, yeah, no one can really film and that, yeah, makes sense. Jeez. Yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's been great. It's been good business wise, but everything else is scary and horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you uh, ever freelance as like an illustrator? I something? did. I did for a short period of time, but, uh, I'm in a position now where, uh, I do okay at the day job. Hmm. I could be really picky and choosy about what I do because hmm. it does take up a lot of time uh, to to do anything like sort of the commission stuff. And I just yeah. kind of, you know, I'm, I'm usually pretty tired. And I just want to draw my own stuff. I don't want to draw other people's like, I think the last thing I drew was like a, a doctor who TARDIS for somebody. Hmm. And I, I couldn't, I was sitting there drawing it and I was just like, why am I <laughs> spending all this time? drawing a phone booth <laughs> it's just it's just you know it was just one of those things so it's just i just didn't want to do it anymore i hear you i hear you um part of my thing is i i get sucked into like i i don't know i it feels good to know that people are approaching you and want you to work on stuff so you say yes but then you're like now i have no time to work on my own projects and then it's like 
Uh... Yeah, and 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 really, like you know, you don't if you don't need it, then there's really no sense in doing it. Exactly. Unless you're trying to let, like really get that business off the ground, and I was just never interested in in uh, in doing that aspect of it of mm-hmm. starting my own. You know, I'll draw something for your business. Like I'd much rather uh, I'd much rather really explore the the filmmaking stuff. Right, right. So um, Allison was telling me something about something called trauma. What what's trauma? <laughs> trauma is one of the oldest independent film companies that's still around today. Uh, it's run by Michael Herz and Lloyd Kaufman, okay. and uh, they're they're another <laughs> major influence. <laughs> for better or worse <laughs> uh, on my stuff and uh i don't know have you ever heard of the uh the toxic avenger no oh well that you should check it out <laughs> maybe it's it's uh it's it's quite out there but uh they have their own streaming service and they promote a lot of work from independents they're very very kind to independents okay so uh so they picked up henry and now my Henry cartoon is streaming on the Troma Now service. Oh, congrats. Nice. Oh, thank you. So uh, hold on. I'll see if I can find the, the web address. I think it's just uh, watch.troma.com. But yeah, they have a lot of very, very strange, uh, strange, strange movies that are, uh, that, that are some, they're worth seeing. Mm-hmm. at least once just to get that good laugh out of it some of yeah. them are so bad that you know they're still worth watching they're still very fun <laughs> but you know one of the first horror movies i ever saw was a trauma movie it was called monster in the closet and it okay. was uh and fergie's in it uh she's a she's just a little kid in it but you know it's you can say hey it's the debut of fergie <laughs> wow wow i didn't know she was a child actor actually <laughs> I didn't know either. I think she was yeah. just in this one trauma film <laughs> that, right. and then they probably went like, screw this never again. <laughs> yeah. So like, what is it? Um, you said you prefer like the filmmaking side of it. Were you always just someone who had stories to tell like, as a kid? Uh, sort of. I was mostly just interested in monster films and stuff like that. Like anything gross or weird. Uh, I really enjoyed and it wasn't until uh, it wasn't until just like about four or five years ago that I started thinking I could actually pull something off. So Mm. I've been studying film, but I've been watching, you know, I've been a watcher of these like very bizarre movies for like a, for as long as I can remember. And I have a pretty healthy collection of junk. (laughs) It's (laughs) clutter. (laughs) I hear you. Um, do you, uh, did you go to school for any of this? Yeah. Yeah. I went to, uh, for animation, I went to NBCC Miramichi, New Brunswick. Okay. Uh, which, you know, if you, if you want to get into the arts, I always just say like, pick a cheap school. Mm -hmm. You don't want to come out of something, you know, owing like a a mountain of money Uh when you could, you know, it's just, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Especially if you're you're uh, if you're working through the arts, it's just like you don't need to have that much debt on you because that just creates a situation where you just can't win. Mm-hmm. Like you have to pick up all these horrible jobs just to make ends meet. Right, life's too short. So for you, you would just say whether like graduate or finish up or whatever it was and go straight straight into the the business. Yeah, yeah, try it out, or just like make something yourself. Like the best teacher is. Uh, is just doing this stuff yourself. Like I'm a big advocate. That's why I like all these independent films and stuff. Cause it's just a bunch of guys and, and people like uh, from all walks of life that just went like, you know what? Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna give me money to do this. I have to take this into my own hands mm. and you get some really interesting stuff coming out of it. Right. Well, and, and that's why I, I kind of love about what you do. And in general too, it's like, I couldn't see, you know, studios get kind of stagnant at, you know, after a while because they're they're so focused on the commercial end oh, of yeah. things. And like, it will be hard for someone to come up with a Henry or something like that. You know, it's just, you you need that connection to, to just, 
I don't know. Um, well, I, I know what you mean. It's uh, what used to happen w- was that uh, the theaters weren't really privately owned, like mm-hmm. a lot of them. And a lot of the major theaters now are their own kind of by like the major mo- movie studios. And there used to be laws in the States that protected people from, uh, from monopoly. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Reagan era kind of did away with that. So that's why you see like a lot of, you, you don't see a lot of these crazy films anymore and all that. They used to be, they used to compete with the big guys mm-hmm. and the big guys don't like competition like Disney and all that, like they'll buy out competition and close it down. Mm. So in, it kind of, uh, in a weird way, they kind of shot themselves in the foot because without the independence, you don't get the really weird new ideas. And Disney needs those weird new ideas. Otherwise, you know, you see what happens. Things feel kind of stagnated and, you know, it's just, I always saw competition as healthy. Same, yeah. I agree, and it it makes you better. Like, uh, I, you know, even like I see people locally doing similar things to me, like, at first it makes you a little like uncomfortable, but ultimately it motivates you to get better and like, okay, they're doing that well over there. What can I do to improve? And and it ultimately helps the entire industry rise. And we, we just create better product for our customers at the end of the day. So Yeah. And it also drives interest. You know, yeah. if, uh, if, if people think like, if they only look at movies and think, well, they're just superhero films and star Wars films. Like if that's their view, they're going to lose interest. Cause it's mm-hmm. just, it's like listening to a song with one note. Yes. It's just, it just doesn't work. Right. Yeah. And that's what ends up happening. They find, Oh, you know, we did really well with that one idea. Let's replicate it 10 times. Yeah. yeah, And that works for them and their films are fine. Like they're, yeah. but, but it does feel, you do kind of like, you know, when you eat sort of hot dogs every day, Yes. I don't know why hot dogs. I don't know why I went there. <laughs> but you get you get sick of hot dogs. <laughs> it's no, just... I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I I love a hamburger. I'll eat a hamburger damn near every day. But then that one day I throw in some like a shawarma or something, and it's like, hey, this is this is good. Like it's you just you need you need to mix it up. It's yeah, simply. like the the variety thing, and it's just like any business. You just need that variety. Yeah. So yeah. That's what I'm trying to that's what I'm trying to do with Henry. Just offer up my <laughs> little corner of the world's variety, <laughs> whatever it is. Right, right. Um, so like when you're sitting in do you ever like hit creative block? Because this is something that I, I don't it seems like you don't. Is that do you ever hit that? that issue yes i do from time to time but usually it's just because there's something else going on in my life that's overtaking my thoughts like Mm. there's something there's some sort of stressful thing that's happening that's that probably needs my emotional attention rather than the art where you know when you do art it's even if it's goofy and all that you're you're sort of trying to uh invoke an emotion Mm. and uh it's that's a really tough thing to do when you're when you're preoccupied with like well i you know i i need to make rent and i don't have any money and blah 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 and who knows there's there's a whole list of reasons in your life that (laughs) you know but i don't know i just uh you just walk away from the drawing table for a second and you go do something else and you'll the ideas will come back Mm. or you can sit down and force it out you can just be like all right (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I'm not getting up for a few hours until I have something. And that's always fun too. And mm-hmm. never leads to crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm only human. Yes. I'm only one guy. I'm only one little dude in Halifax, Nova Scotia. <laughs> but that's that's impressive though, that you do all of that stuff. Uh, but I, I mean, it's, it's, I guess it's just the way it is. You, I, I do a lot of stuff on my own too. It's like, when you want to be an independent, you just, you find a, you find a freaking way. Um, oh yeah. And, <laughs> so, um, with, uh, lost my train of thought. <laughs> That's quite <laughs> awkward. <laughs> 
<laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> it helps oh, if you man. have a short-term memory like me. Your oh. question from before. <laughs> mine, mine's, mine's terrible. I <laughs> mine's I really bad too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I the Natasha will be like, yeah, I told you that, and be like, I'm sure you probably did. <laughs> <laughs> I know after this interview, I'm probably going to get like the, the 10 ideas of things I should have said. <laughs> Just kick myself for that. Oh, yeah. I forgot to tell them about this. <laughs> yeah. I'll be yeah. up all night after this. Seriously. Um, oh, you know what I wanted to ask you about was uh, the one-eyed monster and <laughs> the lady ghoul. Oh, right. wow. Uh well, Lady Ghoul was a sort of a failed project that I just kind of put an end to. Uh, it just wasn't going anywhere. And uh, and like I, it, it was one of those projects where it started off with an okay enough idea. And then while I was doing it, I was going like, no, I should change it. So I was changing it as I was drawing it. It was mm. a comic book. And it, it just fell apart. Like it was just an, like just a complete failure. Uh, you know, not one of my first, but one of many. But but it was still fun. But I, I don't think you'd see them on my website anymore. Mm. And uh, the one eyed monster was just a bunch of dick jokes uh, <laughs> that I was I was sort of making up these fake comic book covers with uh, uh, with this like one eyed creature, and it was kind of like done like like man thing or swamp thing, mostly man thing because man thing also sounds like a like a penis. Right, right. So, so it's just dumb little jokes that I did, and uh, and then I found out how to do uh, stereoscopic 3D with the with the blue and red glasses. Ah, uh, so, cool. So I made a, a stereoscopic 3D comic book that's also on my website. But the thing is, I I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it, so it's probably my worst. Mm. <laughs> but, but it's up there. You know, you gotta. Sometimes you gotta leave your failures online just to remind yourself, keep yourself humble. <laughs> I definitely do that. I, I'm not one of the, like my Instagram account. I see a lot of people like scrubbing them clean and then reinventing themselves. I have all my <laughs> trash up there. You can go back and see it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. It's the only way to live. <laughs> yeah. So with the stereoscopic stuff, it works on on a website, like a website. Like, yes, it does. Actually, it does. But uh, it is very bright. Mm. <laughs> so turn down your brightness if you're going to use it. Gotcha. I've got my headache looking at it. <laughs> but it works. I was really impressed at the time that I got it to work. Right. Does uh, Instagram ever give you a hard time with the stuff you put up? Oh, no, never, never. I think you have to have a bigger audience for them to care. <laughs> uh -huh. There's not a lot of followers that follow my work, but... Uh, but so I, I fly under the radar pretty well. Okay. Okay. That's my goal though. Someday to be big enough that I get <laughs> thrown off Instagram. <laughs> they shut you down. It's like, yeah. I made it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, not now. Well, um, on Instagram, I am the Captain Mushface. Uh, there is a Captain Mushface Instagram account. It's somebody's cat. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> so you can follow that too. It's a cute cat. Uh. <laughs> Right, right. So you gave some good advice about actually the the school thing was 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 interesting. Uh, is there any other advice you would give a, an aspiring animator in particular? An aspiring animator. My my only advice now is uh, the, the industry is so different from when I first started. Hmm. Uh, when I first started, I didn't even have a home computer. Mm -hmm. uh, like I would just use the computers at this studio and then I'd come home and I'd be free, free from horrible news and <laughs> everything. Yeah. So, so my only advice, if I was doing it now, my only advice would be just to try to make your own cartoon. Just, just jump in both feet. Don't worry about it. it it'll probably suck. Uh, but you never know. It might not, but just mm -hmm. finish it. Just try it. And, and, uh, you know, uh, just expect it to fail. Like, don't mm -hmm. just do it. Just do it out of like your itself, like interest and, uh, and your own personal drive. 
and then just like just sort of keep track of your failures as you're as you're going Mm -hmm. and it'll just help you become such a stronger artist in that regard Mm. again it's just you know just just doing it yourself is the greatest teacher right so it's you know uh and also reach out to other animators and just ask them like hey how do you guys do how do you guys do like a fade out or how do you guys do uh uh like a screen wipe and stuff like that you'll get like 18 different answers Mm -hmm. so in the animation industry i like i i look at like say a pixar or whatever the case may be and it seems like they have all these individual people in these very, very specialized areas. Is it like that in the smaller studios? Well, no, and I don't do uh, 3D animation. I'm a 2D animator. Yeah. Uh, with 3D, you do need a lot of that. You need people that, uh, that create textures for just about everything. You need people that, you know, have to make sure that the hair physics are going just right and Mm. you know uh renderers and rig artists and there's just uh like you can there's a bunch of like very successful independent 3d artists uh but but it's it seems to be like a lot more technical work Mm -hmm. and i'm not you know if you throw too many numbers at me my eyes glaze over and i fall asleep Mm -hmm. so i need that i need that sort of drawing side of it Interesting. So in the 2D side of it, there are a lot more, you'd say, traditional artists? Yeah, for the most part. It's still, uh, still these days, you don't need to be a strong uh, draftsman or anything to enter the industry. Hmm. You just need to know how to make things move and how the programs sort of work. And then you can, but but it's, it does certainly help if you know how to draw a little bit. Mm Mm-hmm. Do they care so much about how good of a writer you are? No, not me, because I'm just an animator. I don't even see the writers. Okay. They're not even in the same <laughs> studio as us. Right. So how does that work? They, they'll they tell you, you just get the script, or you don't even see the script? or Because I would imagine you need to see understand the content to, in order to create the facial expressions. And... Oh, yeah, yeah. So what they'll do is... Uh, They'll, they'll hire some writers and uh, they'll write the cartoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, that script will go off to the storyboard artists and the, uh, and the voice artists first. So they'll okay. do all the voice recording uh, right around the same time as the storyboards or after the storyboards, depending on the project. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what we get is uh, we get all the voice, um, we get all the voice clips of them voice acting and we get the uh, and we get the storyboards kind of like uh, made into this uh, made into a, like a little mini cartoon itself. It kind of looks like a moving comic book. It's mm-hmm. really 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 uh, it it's it's really simple. Hmm. And then so we know sort of where the story beats and are and all that. We get that chopped up into little scenes, and then our job is just to make that stuff move. Hmm. So for, they're supposed to go through after that and they put the, they'll like build the characters in flash. So they have all the mouth shapes in them and the blinks and all that. So you can get through stuff rather easy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then the storyboards will also go off to the layout artists. We'll draw all the backgrounds Mm -hmm. and do all that. And as an animator, I get all that stuff and I just kind of put it all together Mm -hmm. and I have to worry about the movement and the acting and all that goodness. I don't know. I I felt like I was rambling. (laughs) No, that makes sense. Yeah, you explained that well, actually, as I, I was always sort of wondering how it worked. So, like, um, you get to sense from different voice inflections uh, what you might want to do with a character. Oh, yeah. And and the poses are also drawn in the storyboards. It takes oh. a lot of the guesswork out of it. Cool. So, you know, like, OK, they want the character to jump up here and be angry. It's like, all right, I can do that. That's easy. So you just put it on model. Mm. An on model just means you just draw the characters to make it look like only one artist drew the character instead right. of 20. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was wondering because, like, some part of me is like, is it kind of happening at the same time where the actors are doing one thing or then you're doing something and the actor has to mimic what's already happening in the animation? Or Oh, no. The actors are long gone by that point. Mm. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Cool. 
So um, is there anything you, you have that you want to talk, like promote that's maybe coming out or anything like that? Yes. Yes. Go to my website, captainmushface.com. Uh, I'm currently working on the sep- the second episode to Henry and it's already way better than the first episode. Okay. So it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still getting it together. It'll still be a while yet because <laughs> uh, animation takes a good long time to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, but yeah, go to my website, follow me on uh, Twitter captain Mushface, instagram the captain Mushface. captain Mushface, remember is the uh, is the cat um and uh and check out troma go to troma watch.troma.com uh they have their own little streaming service and there's a you know i think it's like five bucks a month or something and there's just a ton of some of the weirdest movies you'll ever see on there Okay, <laughs> and and the Lloyd Kaufman of Troma, he's in the first episode of Henry versus the Reptilian Overlords from the Cosmos. Okay, okay, yeah, he nice. did, he lent his voice. Who? Which character? Uh, he sort of plays himself. He gets shot in the face. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, cool. I, I don't. For some reason, I'm I'm blanking on that part, but. Uh... I'll check. I'll have to watch it again. Okay. <laughs> Please do <laughs> and share it. Share it to your friends. I'm an independent artist. I don't yes. have uh, I don't have huge budgets for advertising and all this. Uh, you know, it's it's always a huge help when people like. Uh, that's the biggest thing that people can do to help me out. I don't want money right now. I just want people to share it and enjoy it and watch it. That's the only thing I want people to do. Cool. Cool. Well, Josh. I I enjoy your work and uh, I will be sharing it with my people. And uh, <laughs> thank you for hopping on our page me and sharing some of your, your stuff and, and talking about your process with us. <laughs> it's my process of crying a lot and <laughs> not seeing the sun, <laughs> finding the right vitamin D supplement. <laughs> you know what though? Like part of me, I just wish I had less, hobby sometimes because i i kind of wanted i'm a little jealous to be honest it's like (laughs) every time i say that's what i'm going to do i'm going to lock myself in the house and draw and then it's like well i also play basketball when am i going to play basketball when am i going (laughs) to do this when am i going to do that oh yeah and then there's that other thing that i like to do uh (laughs) <laughs> that just means you're gonna live longer than i am i'm gonna find my <laughs> i'm gonna find my body in about two weeks from now <laughs> uh man but well, at least you're not gonna get corona from going outside so there's, that's true there's, there's that yeah the corona has to come find me <laughs> I mean, very difficult <laughs> yeah all right josh uh thank you for doing our page me and i'll talk to you later yeah thanks for having me on cool Yay! Thank you so much for listening to the Arcade Week Podcast. Thank you to Lange Beats for the theme music. If you got anything out of this show, please rate, review, and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. The more you do this, the more reach the podcast gets, and the more artists I can help learn to make a living at what they love. If you want to know more about what I do, hit me up at artpaysme.com or at ArtPaysMe on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest. See y'all next time.